the topics or practical uh-huh. topics mm. um, or that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, our turnout is really well because people love chatting to us and being here. Um, and I think we're live. Hello, everybody. And a happy Good morning. Tuesday. <laughs> we'll just keep on chatting like nobody's there <laughs> and just uh, have a party on our own. <laughs> Welcome everybody from Future Females Pretoria and you might be seeing that there is a uh, someone very special with us today that isn't normally here with our coffee chats. Um, it is the beautiful Danny Donald. So very, very warm welcome from us, Danny. We are so happy um, to have you here today with us. Um, and obviously, those of you joining us today, obviously, you know, this month, um, this month, theme is all about relationships and Anandi I think you speak about all the time um, relationships um, you actually met your business partner through Future Female so you're always advocating for relationships and the importance of it right absolutely like uh, we, we talk about networking and building your network and I mean there's a very famous quote these days your network is your net worth mm-hmm. um, and it, it starts with relationships and we've seen in business we've seen as entrepreneurs I mean, we talk about this a lot as well. It's a lonely journey. So building the right relationships and the people around you that can support you, partner with you, collaborate with you, be a sounding board, be a mentor that you can learn from, that you can teach. Um, having those important relationships is valuable to not just your business growth, but um, individual growth. And um, I think part of that, and that's what I'm, we're going to be talking about today, is understanding how you work as a person within other people and how their personalities connect so that you can have a stronger relationship and like i know with with madlis and my business partner and, and our fellow future females ambassador that was one of the big things that we connected is how do we connect as people what is our personality types where do we complement each other and then where do we kind of have friction but then how have we we use that friction for i guess it's like a better word to our benefit how do we use it to be better to be stronger and mm-hmm. i mean there's ego involved and all kinds of other stuff that we know <laughs> as humans we are flawed but i think that's where knowing who you are and, and what your strengths are is so important when building relationships with the people around you i love that and i think one thing that i'm um, really hit home for me is you know, as you as you build relationships, especially as a, as a small business owner, it's vital to build relationships. And sometimes, you know, like you said, there's friction. Let's be real. That that's the reality of things. We're all different. And um, you know, I read a quote that said, "We don't um, see things as they are. We see them as we are." Mm-hmm. And I think you know that is basically the the core foundation of what we're going to be chatting about is understanding yourself because I think that's where you need to start. Michael Jackson said, "Start with a man in the mirror." So start with yourself and understanding yourself, and and that's where Danny comes in because um, Danny is well, she wears many hats, but she's a coach and she's an enneagram specialist. Um, and obviously, enneagram has been I think it's been a buzzword. I'm hearing enneagram everywhere. Um, on TV shows, on live webinars, online, it's everywhere. But um, Danny, what exactly is, what is the Enneagram and, and yeah, but before you tell us that, tell our, tell our audience a bit about yourself. <laughs> yeah, well, well, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, like you were saying, we were just chatting and I don't even think we realized that we went live. So we might as well just carry on with our conversation. Um, so I do, I suppose, wear many hats as a lot of us do naturally. Um, but I've started out as a, a grief and hospice counselor. And I started studying the Enneagram about six years ago just for my own personal development. And it was something I absolutely fell in love with because of the relief that it gave me on my grief journey. So, you know, we were speaking about the entrepreneurial journey now and also read something that said that the depression is a bit of an epidemic within entrepreneurs and creatives. And I think a lot of it, one is the isolation and the stress, but also I think we put so much emphasis on these goals that we're trying to achieve that we don't turn it around to actually look at what our needs are. What is our personality asking of us? You know, what is the driving force behind our behavior? Why are we doing what we're doing? So the Enneagram became this massive um, relief for me because it helped me release a lot of the, the stress and depression and anxiety around grief. And then it started filtering into business. And then it started filtering into family. And then it started filtering into my relationships. 
So then I was like, okay, let me take it forward and not just use it as a tool for myself, but help educate people because I was finding that I was wanting to use all this language around the Enneagram, but I had to educate people first before we were able to converse in a similar way. Um, So yeah, got from grief counselor to Enneagram coach and speaker, but as we all know, we all evolve at a rate of knots, so it'll probably be something completely different next year, um, but yeah, it's kind of, it's it's in a nutshell about the journey, but as you've said now, that Enneagram really has become a bit of a buzzword, and I think it kind of goes in waves, as any trend does, um, and I think why it dips over time, which it probably will end up dipping again, is because there's too much emphasis on the fact that it's a personality typing system. So there are nine different types or distortions of, of reality, but, but we'll come back to that. And I think we, we generally stop at identifying the types. So we stop at, oh, okay, I'm a type one or I'm a type three or I'm a type nine. And then we think that we've done the work. But one of my mentors said recently that stopping at just typing yourself is like arriving at this phenomenal palace and stopping at the front door that there is so much more to this work and to this map than we give credit. So that's why I think it kind of goes in waves of, oh, this is really cool. And then people lose interest because as you guys know, doing the work is hard and doing the work around personality and ego is really, really hard. Mm. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, can I introduce the, the map itself? If yes, have please do. Uh, please do. I'm that. super excited. Like I'm waiting in anticipation because I know about it, but <laughs> I'm still so excited to hear. Okay. So, I mean, I'll, I mean, as, as you guys know, and we'll, we'll circle back to it later, um, you have both attended my full day workshops. As you know, there is so much information and that event itself is one day out of, I mean, like I said, I've been studying it for six years. So to condense it into a very... Um, simplified version is like I said it is a personality typing system or map and I prefer to use the word map because it's not the stagnant place where you almost place yourself in a type and then that's where you rest there's a lot of movement and integration around the map as you want to become a healthier version of yourself but it speaks to nine different personality types and as I said earlier like distortions of reality so it's almost as if we're all wearing a different lens as if we're wearing glasses all the time and we we have a different color tinted lens and that's the way that we're viewing the world so it's our own version of reality but those nine different types are slightly nuanced in a different way because everyone is always trying to move towards a desire or away from and defend a particular fear and that's where our personality develops from is that we have an innate biological temperament that we are born with and then as we navigate childhood that personality or defense structure starts forming because we either want to remain safe or we want to remain autonomous and sovereign and independent of other people or we want to be seen as valuable or seen as worthy so this intersection between our temperament that we're born with as well as the the context that we're living in and the environment that we're living in come together to form this personality and you just happen to have nine different versions of those realities I love that. That is so important. I think that, you know, um, you speak about realities and I think, uh, you know, at your Enneagram base camp and, and obviously you call it a base camp because that's sort of where it starts, right? Um, yeah. If you want to learn about the Enneagram and, and your personality type, that's that's sort of where you're going to get started. And I think that um, I'm I don't really want to dive in too, too, into too much depth right now, but obviously, as you mentioned, Anandi and myself were very, very privileged to attend one of your base camps. And um, I can honestly say from my side, I think, um, you know, if you say you, it's changed my life, it sounds kind of like, what, that's a bit over the top one base camp, it can't change your life. But I think just realizing the depth of, of your personality and, and how much potential you have, because I think you have to be able to understand yourself to grow. Mm. Because if you, if you can't identify, because I think very often, especially in today's society, we live in a self-growth society. You know, we, we live in a society where, um, growing and or self-improvement should I rather say you know we're, we're all we're all on the self-improvement journey on one way or another and everyone's doing self-improvement and that's great but whenever we speak about oh we don't speak about our flaws it's sort of hidden under the mat you know yeah. because we don't have flaws we're just going to self-improve and be better <laughs> and you know <laughs> 
<laughs> that's not really the reality of it. And, and I think that was one of my biggest learnings was how do you embrace that? How do you really step into that? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I think you have to really acknowledge it to be able to move forward and, and use it as a tool rather than this heavy burden on you, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and flaw, it's, I hope over time, we all come to unlearn that, that language, right? But, you know, there's, it's always this polarity of good, bad, right, wrong, flawed, strengths, weaknesses. And um, also, I had a very similar experience, and I see it a lot in people where they don't like the Enneagram because, oh, but it focuses on my weaknesses. But <laughs> what we don't understand is that these weaknesses or flaws are just shadow sides to our strengths, yeah. So, and by understanding those, it actually sets us free from the limitations of them. So, um, for example, I mean, I, I can give a personal example around my type. So, I identify with the type three, mm -hmm. and type threes are very concerned around how they're seen, if they're seen as valuable, if they're seen as having inherent worth, if they're contributing with impact. So that can have a really positive spin, but it can also have a very limiting, negative, flawed spin, because that means a lot of my behavior is driven by wanting to always add value. So it's to understand where the, the weakness is in that sets you free from it, because a lot of people say, oh, but I don't want to be put into a box. Like that's a lot of people's worst nightmare when it comes to personality typing. But I kind of want to say to them, like, newsflash, you, you are in a box already. You are in a box that's driven by the reactivity of your personality, of this conditioning that you've picked up over the years. The whole idea here is to actually shed that defensive personality and free yourself from the box. And that's how you kind of become closer to who you are. You know, people say about coming home, and it's, again, another, like, buzz term. But but what does that mean if if you feel like I am home, I'm in this body already, but it's more personality versus, versus essence. So and they say essence is um, likened to when you come home at the end of the day, and you can actually feel like you, you, you're breathing out what you wear, what you say or don't say, how you conduct yourself at home, that in your quiet space, that is home that's essence that's you the masks the onness the the slightly tweaking yourself I mean you can even see as we all went live all of us suddenly the tone of voice changes and the posture mm -hmm. changes because we're in a different environment so it's learning the difference between personality and essence and not over identifying with either of them and that's what sets you free ultimately well wow, that is so powerful and Andy, I wanted to ask you because um I so badly want to hear you about from you as well but I think as I said for me, you know, the Enneagram base camp, and I'm going to keep mentioning it because it was so amazing. Um, it really helped me to identify, um, obviously, that type, but also the depth of personality. And then also learning that um, every single personality type has um, almost a scale of, you know, the best version of you or not the worst version of you, but you know the darker version of you yeah. and and I think to me it was I know this is going to sound yet again very dramatic but it's I, I'm speaking to people <laughs> in a similar, similar personality type to myself it felt like looking into the future and looking into the past and mm -hmm. seeing possibilities of what I could do and and who I could be if I let go of certain things or um, develop certain things um, of my personality and I think that you know, that is so empowering and, and just seeing the, the vastness of us, of, of who we are and the vastness of, of, of humans. So, um, yeah, that was basically one of the big things for me. And Andy, what did you take from the day? Because we're very different personality types. <laughs> very different. Well, before I, before I go with my takeaways, I actually wanted to mention this because I've done a lot of personality types. Um, you know, I've been in corporate. They tend to always put you through these personality types. You have obviously DISC, you have my Briggs, you have the new um, hot topic of 16 personalities, there's Gallup Strengths. Um, and I have to say, it's always great to be able to figure out your personality, be like, oh, yeah, I'm like that. Oh, yeah, I'm like that. But what the Enneagram did for me and what, what the base cam did with, with you, Danny, is the first time I understood why I am the way I am, and I understood how I interact with people. Like, I went home that evening and I chatted to my husband, and I'm like, this is why we always fight about this and you can know you can have the best relationship with someone but if you don't understand the details around what what triggers you 
Uh, mm. You can't actually get the tools to fix it. And I felt like we walked away with from Basecamp with the tools to understand relationships. And mm. I mean, I've literally been telling everyone about it. And a few weeks ago, I was having lunch with somebody that I'm very, very close to. And we've been having a really tough time of sorting out a problem in our relationship about something that happened a year ago because they feel a certain way and I feel a different way. And as we were sitting, I was kind of, I asked him some questions based on how you worked us through the Enneagram on Basecamp. And I, I found out that they are type one and, I, mm. and I'm a type five. So just for anybody who maybe don't know the types, type ones are very black and white, very right and wrong, very, a um, little bit critique, very judgmental. And type fives are very intellectual. We like think everything. Like for me, I will think of every possible scenario and then based on the, you know, what makes the most sense that's how i make my decisions and the specific problem that i have with this person came about that in their eyes it was black and white and what i did was wrong and in my eyes i looked at all the different scenarios and i chose the best possible one that fits for the situation at that time and this has been a struggle we've had for the entire year so much so that it's really negatively affected our relationship but the moment it clicked i was like oh okay and we moved on and we're fine now so the reason why I share this is because when we understand how we think and how we process information versus how other people do, it helps us to actually understand them a lot better. And that's why this isn't just a personality test. It is actually connecting to who we are as people and how we, exactly like you said, Danny, how we perceive the world through our lens, but then having giving us the tools to understand how somebody else's lens is very, very different to ours. Yeah. So just a little story there. <laughs> yeah, and, it, and it's such a, it's a lived experience of it, right? It's such a phenomenal story to hear. So thanks for sharing that because it brings, you know, people can say, oh, but this is a benefit and this is what it does, but it's all just noise. It's all just words. But when you actually hear the lived experience of the impact, it makes such a difference. And in that case, to know that you do this and then and then that person does the next thing but but why you know you're doing it more from a the more i know about everything the safer i am if i know my options yeah. whereas the next person that you're struggling with is more a case of there's right or wrong because if someone gets it wrong they are impacting me and they are impacting on my autonomy and my independence so it's not even about safety at all it's about principle so mm -hmm. understanding those those motivating factors is actually really liberating so i'm glad to hear that you had that experience that's awesome I wanted no, to ask absolutely. you, Danny. Sorry, um, I wanted to ask you because I know that um, the big thing for me is when you when you Google, because a lot of people might be watching this later, because we have quite a lot of people, including my mom. Hello, mom, who watches Hello, mom. us. Like <laughs> she is such an amazing supporter to us, and she watches all of our live videos late at night to support us. So um, for everyone you know watching later on, and um, they might be watching and going Enneagram. Yes, some people know about it, but some people have just heard about it. And it, I think it's uh, from all the different personality types, as Anani mentioned, I, I found the Enneagram to be, once you first just look at it, it seems very overwhelming because mm. there's this picture with like, um, you know, this image and yeah, yeah, like it's almost like a star and there's like nine and it, it looks like there's a lot going on. Um, so, <laughs> you know, and then you go, I don't know. It, and it's not like other personality types uh, typing uh, you know, questionnaires. So I wanted to ask you, I know we don't have hours to to go through it, but, you know, for someone who maybe they Google Enneagram and they um, see that specific diagram of the nine personality types, um, would you mind just explaining the the three different categories um, in, in you know, in which which different three categories there are in, and then we can go from there. Absolutely. Actually, I've been saying this a few times over that I should print out something just so because obviously depending on different interviews you want to have the visual so mm -hmm. I'm going to grab a map quickly okay. if you don't mind um, I'll okay. be back <laughs> the visual helps so massively um, there we go Cool. So with the three different centers um, now that you'd mentioned, and it is always like a really great starting point because the nine different types can be so overwhelming. Um, but just for everyone watching later, and you'll see this when, when you Google it, but this is a simplified version of the map. So if I go a little bit closer there, you can see the nine start and then one all the way through to eight. 
So the three different centers of intelligence um, that you'd mentioned now, um, so eight, nine, and one fit into the one grouping, two, three, and four fit into another one, and five, six, and seven fit into another one. So those would be the three different centers. So just very, very briefly, and this even in, a, in and of itself really gives a lot of clarity, is eight, nine, and one is the body type. So that is somatic intelligence. Two, three, and four would be the heart type, the heart center, and that's emotional intelligence. And five, six, and seven would be the head center. So that's more cognitive intellectual intelligence. And each of them move about in the world and have very different distortions of reality because they are coming from each of those places. So each one has a slightly different concern. So eight, nine, and one being in the body center, their concern is all around autonomy, sovereignty, and independence. So they are concerned around impact. Am I impacting people or are people impacting me? Mm. Um, five, six, and seven here in the head center, that's also a lot of noise. Um, a lot of like intellectual stimulation, a lot of thought processes, and their concern is around safety and security. So the question is always, am I safe? So the body center was, am I impacting people or am I impacted? With five, six, and seven, it's, am I safe? Is there security here? How can I become safe? Whereas two, three, and four are all concerned, so that's the heart center, they're concerned around how they're seen. Am I seen as unique? Am I seen as valuable? Am I seen as lovable? Am I seen as likable? So you can already see that just from the three different centers, radically different experiences of the world. And each one has a very different underlying emotion. So for the body center at eight, nine, and one, the underlying emotion is anger, whether it's more overt or it's more suppressed. Whereas five, six, and seven in the head center, that um, underlying emotion would be anxiety. Mm. And for two, three, and four, the underlying emotion, there would be a lot of shame or grief. So then even the emotion that we experience is radically different as a, as a default. Because I know if some people don't even like anxiety, like I hear the word, but I don't know what it means. But that's because their, their dominant emotion would be anger and frustration. So that's kind of it in a, in a little bit of a nutshell with the time. Danny, you know? if, if I can, sorry, so if I can just quickly interrupt here, I think explaining that for me is what brings it home because i think you know a lot of people look at the different personality types and, and that this is a beautiful but how you do the base camp is you kind of let people figuring it out for themselves and um you know a lot of people start off your base camp thinking oh i could be a one and a five and a seven and an eight because you resonate with elements of it and what brought it home for me is the centers of intelligence because mm -hmm. what sits with me the most and that's how i kind of started defining yeah, this is how i am a five because i know i'm in my head i overthink everything is about intellectualizing i have a deep fear about the future and about being safe and secure and having stability in my life and that's even though i resonated with other numbers i could then see how the wings and lines of integration those were those elements but my core was and it was in the how i figured out was purely because of the centers of intelligence so i think they are so important Mm, absolutely and it really is it's it's what drives your behavior so if it's safety and security or is it being seen as valuable or unique and, and you'll see that that is in everything you do it's what mm. you wear it's how you speak when you leave the house if you choose not to leave the house um it like you said i'm glad you said that it, it brought it home for you because i had a very similar experience because you get a lot of like more extroverted and introverted personalities and there are a lot that are very similar in energy and the way that they show up in the world but the motivation is definitely mm. a determining factor yeah absolutely. i absolutely um i think you know um first of all hello to everyone who's just joined we're so happy that you're here um i've actually invited a few of um so nandi and i just a side note are part of this amazing life-changing fitness community and i've actually recently been doing a challenge and a lot of what we do in the challenge is very based on not just your physical um health but also your mental health and um and also a big focus has been understanding yourself understanding you know your love languages understanding you know what makes you tick and i think that we were chatting about the enneagram the other night and they were going to have an enneagram specialist on and and that she couldn't make it so um i've invited everybody on to join us um because i know everyone was super interested and i hope some of our joburg and um, people will be able to join your base camp as well because i think they so benefit from it um but yeah so so welcome to everybody and i just wanted to mention danny one thing that you've been chatting about is obviously the different centers and 
you were talking about an emotion um almost connected to some you know to the different senses and I think that is so important because very often I don't know I if it was the same for you but you have this emotion but you never really put a word to it it's almost like this it's a faceless emotion you know so <laughs> Um, you know, Danny, I'm also, I also identify with a three. So for me, and yet, yet again, this can be seen as, I don't want to be a three. I don't want to be, you know, have like shame or, you know, but at the end of the day, uh, that was so true. I was thinking, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of the core emotion that drives us and drives a lot of our, um, actions and I think that's one of the things that I love about the Enneagram is it teaches you why you do what you do. Yeah. what what's the driving force behind your actions because very yeah. often we act without realizing why we we act a certain way or we defend ourselves yeah. or we you know become a defensive in a certain situation and we're not sure why and I think once you identify that you can go oh wow okay this is not necessarily like you said good or bad but it's it's a tool that's how I see it it's a tool to actually go forward um, and I think once you start, um, one of the things that, that Danny does in her base camp, which I really appreciate it, is everyone that identifies with a certain group actually goes up and we and you get to, to basically interview them. And what I loved about that is, um, and Andy, we spoke about this as well, is how you could actually see the difference in body posture, in body language, in uh, you know, phrasing. So certain words that certain personalities use, um, you know, what, when they speak about things, you know, how they scared of X, Y, and Z, or how X, Y, and Z frustrates them. And it's all the same. And mm. then, you know, also how they relate to other personalities. And I loved how we could ask them, you know, um, how could we interact with you better as this mm. personality type to that personality type. And that opens up a massive floor for actually understanding each other better. Yeah. Absolutely. And like you say, like it's, it's there anyway, you know, we talk about weaknesses and flaws and stuff, but, but these things are, are part of our lived experience anyway. So why not just shine a light on it so it can bring us some sort of relief or, or, or at least help us integrate further in life and become slightly healthier because just by ignoring something, it doesn't make its presence any less impactful on your life, you know. Mm -mm. so obviously you know you run these base camps and and more than the base camps you actually do a lot of work with with clients um but I wanted to ask you in a practical sense because Anandi and I can chat about how it's impacted us in a in a work environment but um if people are interested in learning more about the Enneagram because okay let me take a step back I think that um we spoke about person now Anandi's laughing personality types but you know how you go online and you just to quickly do a test and you're like I'm this type and boom that's it and you said, well, that's like coming to a palace and standing at the door and not actually opening the door, you know, Just knowing the type, knowing your type is only the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, you know, with the Enneagram, this is where it differs from other personality tests. It's mm -hmm. very much in depth and there's a lot of room for understanding and growth and utilization. It's not just do a quick test. And I personally wouldn't even recommend doing just a quick test online. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Can I say that? <laughs> well i mean i have never taken a test myself which um, people are often shocked by but i never have because the experiential learning for me is where it really lands otherwise it's just characteristics and traits on a piece of paper and we consume so much information every day anyway it just becomes noise so mm. I, I back so you, you, would, so you would say don't do the test online it's not worth it but um, what I wanted to <laughs> not worth it but I think that like it's, you a said, starting point. it's a starting point um but what I wanted to ask you is so if if you know people are listening today and they want to know so um, I'm not just doing a test online I'm coming to a base camp or I'm working with you what would be the benefits of of doing it of utilizing Enneagram what can you get from it so, I mean, as pretty much what this whole conversation has been is a lot of understanding, a lot of compassion, patience, liberation, like that, that <laughs> I remember seeing at the workshop the last time, like throughout the day, people like quite literally going like this, like in terms of like just that their minds were being blown because you can actually see when the penny drops for people. So what I say to people, because what's really hard is we always trying to, we always want to box things into demographics, right? So this kind of person, you're going to get this particular benefit. But what's hard about the Enneagram is that it's, it's for everyone and anyone because we're all human at the end of the day. So mm -hmm. the best way that I can say is for the people watching now, if just top of mind, what is the, the biggest problem or discomfort or struggle point that you have today, this week, this month? 
And what the Enneagram will allow is a lot of understanding and compassion and liberation around that particular problem, whether it's internal or external, the understanding of personality brings a lot of awareness towards that particular problem that you're having. And, and as was mentioned now, I mean, examples throughout the talk that um, it brings a lot of understanding and then release to that problem because you come to radically accept what's going on and then it gives you direction and a pathway forward. And I know it's at the risk of sounding incredibly vague, um, but, but it, that's how expansive it is, is that it really does touch on any struggle point because as humans, we're always emitting or emanating from us as, as a person, you know, so every problem that we're facing is always going to circle back to us and the way that we are showing up in that situation. So it always comes back to personality and how we show up in a, in a, in a situation. So I would say the problem that, that comes to mind, um, this will most likely be able to help you navigate it going forward, whether it's personally or professionally, because we're all interacting with people at the end of the day. Definitely. So you would say, am I right in saying that um, whether you want to come to the base camp and learn more about the Enneagram from a professional level, because I think that's one of the reasons Anandi and I did it is because we, we work very closely. And I think, you know, all personality types are almost at the alternate side yeah. of the spectrum. And guess what? My husband is the same type. So clearly I like that type. So <laughs> even though we're, we know, uh, completely different, but um, just understanding each other and and realizing um, how you see goals, how you work towards certain things, how you want to be recognized. Um, is recognition even important for that specific personality type? Because some people don't really care about it, you know? So I think understanding that it, it, it actually helps us to, to align better, work, work together really well. And also when frustrations arise, for me, it's a lot easier. And Anandi, I don't know if you've experienced the same, but I think for me, if you do or something specifically and maybe something's frustrating me, I can understand now why you're asking it of me yeah. or whatever it might be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was going to say absolutely but it comes back to my previous point of it's not just another personality test and, and I think Ismi that's why this is so important this is immersive this becomes a part of your life um, and Danny you say this when people leave the base camp you say if you haven't figured out your type yet that's okay but now you have the tools to get started so pay attention to how you live your life now and I mean that's what I did and I realized that yes I am 100% <laughs> of five there's now no doubt everything I do is part of that but the thing is, and, and this come back, comes back to what you said earlier, our flaws, our weaknesses, a lot of people say, well, change, you know, get rid of the weakness and be stronger. But sometimes we can't just change. We also are just who we are. But learning how to work and navigate your flaws and weaknesses and how mm -hmm. to turn them into opportunities and how to work and navigate other people's flaws and weaknesses is much more important. And that's, I think, much more doable than trying to push them aside and only focus on what makes you amazing. And mm -hmm. being in a team environment, understanding my team member, my colleague, helps me a lot to do my job better, but I've seen that she's not able to do her job better. So mm -hmm. I think it's there's so many benefits from personal relationships to business relationships, to I'm sure like friends and family relationships. Mm -hmm. um, like I mentioned with the close person that I have, there's, there's a lot of benefits of understanding these types and how they interact with each other um, in such very special ways. Yeah. And then when you come across those problems within yourself or with someone else, it does, you don't just become stagnant because you see these problems more as doorways. So, yeah. so they say that the learning about your type, it doesn't tell you who you are. It tells mm -hmm. you where to begin the investigation into who you are. So because yeah. you understand what's driving and motivating that behavior, it, it, it's, it's like, oh, okay. And then the curiosity kicks in and then you carry on down that path. Um, but like you said, it's not about shunning the weakness. It's actually in order to become healthier, you need to integrate the weakness into your personality. And that's actually what drives you forward. It's like the secret ingredient that no one ever really told us about. Yes, I absolutely love that. I wanted to obviously I know that we are running out of time and I wanted to be mindful of everybody's time. So I think that there is obviously so much depth to the Enneagram and um, I've, um, I have a million more questions with regards to, you know, the types and identifying them and how you can work with them. But that's exactly why you run these base camps and why you do a full day, right? Because it's just so immersive. Um, so that's, you know, we wanted to give, we wanted to bring Danny on because 
it's changed, a, it made a massive impact on myself and on Andy. And, you know, it's helped us immensely on a professional level, in a, on a personal level. And for me, it, it almost feels like it gave me that kickstart to really, to move forward. Mm-hmm. Um, there were certain things holding me back and I was like, oh, now I get it. Okay, cool. This is how I navigate around it. And, um, you know, I think self-knowledge is one of the most powerful tools that you can have and and utilize. So um, that's why I would definitely encourage anybody that if you're listening to us right now and you are in the vicinity of Gauteng, um, Joburg, Pretoria, or, or in the surrounding areas, uh, Dani is going to be running one of her base camps. So it's a full day um it's called a base camp. So it's a full day and uh, you get to spend the whole day with, um, with Danny and um, Danny, what will you be covering in your base camp? So base camp covers. So as I've showed you the map now, so it covers each of the specific types and then it covers each of the different centers. And then it also goes to why the Enneagram, how personality was developed growing up and the difference between personality and essence and really why it's such a significant tool. And then the most important part of the day is that it's very experiential. And that's why it takes long as it's not just me throwing theory out there and me talking at you. It's that you get to come and learn from people. You get to see the personification of every type. So then what makes the day a bit longer in the afternoon is that we do those interviews. So each of the different types just get to say, this is why I think I'm this type and this is what my experience is. And then that's where all of those light bulb moments go off. So it is quite a long day, but the most phenomenal thing for me is actually when we've done surveys afterwards, that people have always asked for it to be longer. Can it be longer on the day or can it be over two days? So um, it's a big investment time-wise, but in, but the return that you get in terms of the um, expansion of knowledge and understanding is, is really second to none. And it's just the beginning. I mean, we've got advanced training and one-on-one work and team training and stuff that comes afterwards, but this is always the most phenomenal entry point into the work, I would say. I would. I love it. And obviously, you mentioned that you, um, because you are a big fan of the Future for Female community as well, you want to um, give our community a really special offer and invite them to the base camp. And um, if they wanted to purchase tickets, can they email you, Danny? Yes, please. Um, are you guys able to type in the comments or something an email? Would, okay, cool, great. And I need something like that. Oh, oh, <laughs> she's on it. Um, <laughs> So yeah, please just pop me an email if you're interested. Like I said, I've got like big discounts. We're also going to mention a giveaway now for the Future Females community. It's next Wednesday, the 3rd of November, this this one coming up. There won't be any more for the rest of the year. Um, my, my big goal here is just to have people experience the work. So if this is something that has piqued your interest, please pop me an email and it'll be great to have mm-hmm. you there. Perfect. And now we get to the exciting part. Yay! Um, And that is obviously that Danny has been so gracious and so kind that she actually wants to empower uh, two of our community members. So just to clarify, um, if you are listening, you can you can win. <laughs> so if you're listening to this, you can win. Um, if you want to join Danny on her base camp on the 3rd of November, um, that will be taking place in Johannesburg. Am I right in saying that, Danny? Okay, great. Um, If you are interested and you feel like you need this in your life, um, you need to uh, uh, DM us, either uh, future females or you can DM Anandi or myself. And what we'd like to know is you can tell us, please pick me. I want to win the ticket and let us know why you want to go. Um, That's what we want to know. So why do you want to go to the Enneagram Base Camp? And um, yeah, so we are very excited. And once we receive those DMs, so DM for anyone who's maybe technologically challenged, that means it's a direct message. So you send us a message on Messenger. Um, I don't want to disqualify anybody. Uh, And then you send us a direct message and we will announce the winners and we will let them know that they are going to be attending your base camp. So, and if there are any questions, um, I know that maybe there aren't any, I don't think there's any at the moment, um, but like I said, I know that it's quite a hefty topic. So if yeah. anything pops up, you're listening to this later tonight with your glass of wine or cup of coffee, and you're like, oh, I really want to know this, comment, let us know. Danny, I'm sure you'll still be happy to help. Oh, absolutely. And I love questions because they also get me thinking of, again, different lenses, different perspectives, different ways of understanding the work. Awesome. Anani, do you have anything else that you wanted to add? So I've also just added in mine and Esri's email addresses. If you um, don't know how to DM, you can email (laughs) us as well. 
just tell us, yeah, that you want to join the Enneagram and why you think um, it would be a bit beneficial to you, why you think it will make a difference in your life. Um, I mean, as you guys know, we have our How to Connect to Your Inner Leader workshop with Teresa Richardson tomorrow evening. And I think this is such a valuable tool when we are connecting to our inner leaders, to connecting mm. to our strengths, connecting to how we work with people. And like we mentioned at the beginning of this um, chat, this month is all about relationships and knowing how to build relationships while building on your strengths and, and knowing how to work with those flaws and weaknesses is so so vital and so important so yeah email us or dm us if you want to win those tickets or if you want to um, attend the base camp with danny i mean like esmer and i said this has really changed our lives um personal and business i've also mm -hmm. popped danny's email into the comments you can email her she's giving a 60 percent discount uh, i'm right right um <laughs> um to join the base camp which is absolutely phenomenal uh, i mean danny i will sing your praises all day long guys join it do it go with your partners go with your business associates mm -hmm. there was a few um business groups there the day we were there um i am very intrigued in taking my family when you do a weekend one again i hope next year and i mean it is so so valuable in so many aspects but I think also what I want to end off with um, is in the times we are living in, we are constantly in trauma. We are constantly dealing with stress. There's a lot of burnout happening. But if we understand how we cope with the things in our life and how we navigate the relationships and the situations, imagine how much better equipped you are to deal with everything else that's going to still happen within the next coming months. Um, building your business, building your career, just like we mentioned, normal relationships. I think this is valid across the board, guys. So don't miss out on this fantastic opportunity. Oh, Anandi, that is so well said. Thank you so much. Something else to say, really, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> that's a five minutes she's so awesome um I just wanted to she she mentioned it briefly but I wanted to remind you because you're maybe so excited about this Enneagram ticket that you could win that you like shutting down from excitement but just a reminder <laughs> please join us um on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m as Anandi said we have a phenomenal speaker and she's also going to be touching on yet again your personality and how to utilize what you have to grow as a leader. And I think that um, a lot of people think that they may be not inherently leaders because that's not their personality type. Yeah. And um, I'm sure you'll agree, Danny, but I think that leadership is a quality that can be developed and, and honed and honed. So, you know, it's important to, to equip yourself with the tools. So if you haven't got a ticket yet, it's quite limited. Um, the link is in, uh, you can actually click on at the top of our Facebook. There's a link there. Um, and we'll also pop the link for the tickets in the comments. Please thank you, Anandi. <laughs> and that's it from us. And Danny, we are so excited and thank, thank you for being you. so kind. Oh, thanks thank for you. Me. chatting to you. <laughs> thanks guys. And thanks for everyone for watching. Have a lovely awesome. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Bye.